Um, looks like everything's ready. I will count it down in three, two, one. Uh, you... You're right. I don't get you. I've prepared a little taste of Minnesota called Lutefisk. <laughs> The Morning Stream. What do you say? We get nipple to nipple. <laughs> Greetings, everybody, and welcome to TMS. It's the Morning Stream for Thursday, March 21st, 2024. I'm Scott Johnson, and that is Brian Ibbett. It is. Uh, hello. Yellow. Woo! Yellow. Scott. Yellow. Yellow, everybody. <laughs> yellow. <laughs> We had a great pre-show talking about yellow and uh, stuff. And Jeff Lynn and his 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 album cover spaceships and yeah. something that uh, might be happening soon. Do you Keep say an that, eye out. that tour you talked about? Is that coming to you? I didn't read it. Uh, uh, I don't know if it is or not. Um, I see. saw him. Let's see here. This one I think is just the Enterprise Center, appropriately enough, September sixth. Oh, like I'll that. bet he's coming to Denver because he really liked uh, Ballerina. Um, yeah, actually, I know he is because that's how I found out about it. Because I got the the notification from uh, uh, from uh, from Ball Arena that he was coming. Oh, um, nice! Everyone loves. I don't Jeff know if Lynn. I'll see him. Yeah. yeah, I'll bet you will. You know what? I think you have the power and the will power. Well, October second, Ball Arena, the over and out tour. Does that mean he's saying that it's this is it? It's he's probably saying this is it. Right? Oh, is that what that means? That is what that means. The over and out tour. It yeah. could be vague enough that he could say. Oh no, I didn't mean that, and goes on another tour. Or you could say, "Oh yeah, that was the that's the end, a little yeah. bit." Like it's an easy one for him to to flip flop on. I'm Jim Jeff Lim. Damn it, I can do what I want. He'll say he really can do what he wants. And I saw this tour years ago, or the his uh, his hits tour, and I feel like I feel like I got what I needed out of that, yeah. so I don't need to see another one. I get that. that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And this won't be cheap. I promise you that. No, it definitely won't. Now, Blondie's coming to Denver. Uh-oh. And I have never seen... Blondie is another one of those that's on my list of... Um, uh, bucket list of bands I want to see. That's cool. Uh, so, yeah, it'd be nice to see Blondie. Yeah, you want to? You always want to see Blondie. Uh, mm-hmm. I got some, <laughs> speaking of Blondie's, I got to show you something real weird here. Sure, okay. Uh, Jim I'm, Jensen I'm in our community, he's Ida Bloke in uh, chat. Uh, he's mm-hmm. always around doing cool stuff. Mm-hmm. He will yeah. sometimes show up my doorstep with something cool. Oh, yeah, yeah. This time he showed up with the weirdest thing I may have ever gotten on TMS. And uh, okay. I'm going to show it to you. So you remember us talking about mannequins the other day? Yes. Oh, no. no. What? <laughs> oh, no. Did he drop off a mannequin? It's almost worse than that. Oh, um, God. Okay. Because, yes, the answer is yes, but this is it. Oh, it's like a it's like a kid with an alien head. That's like um like Old Navy had those right for showing off their kids clothing. I guess so. They have it's a po- it has so one oh of it's feet, posable inside. Oh yeah, look at that! It has hole a little hole can, for uh... the stick for the and there is a stand. <laughs> I have that over there. <laughs> but you can like bend its leg like this. In fact, it came packaged so that its legs were actually bent up in a, toward its gut, which is <laughs> terrible. Its arms come off oh my God. like that. See? Okay. All right. And nice. uh, I'll put that back in there. It's uh, it's nondescript. There's no face. It's all material. Um, you know, some, probably a wireframe underneath with just this fluff on it, and then so yeah. shut. And he got it at this place in town that just does like bulk discount weird stuff like this. Okay. Oh I my want God, a- I need a store like that in uh, <laughs> in in my town. I'm sure there's something. I forgot the name of it. He he always says it, and I always forget it. But anyway, so now I have this creepy ass thing. I don't know what to do with it. <laughs> I know it's so creepy. Yeah. You I need mean, to give it like a um uh, a Pink Floyd the Wall uh, face. You remember the kids in Pink Floyd? The- <laughs> oh, yeah, that's not bad actually. Creepy eyes and stuff. That's yeah. not bad. I mean, he looks like a little Harkonnen child or like a. Maybe a, I could make him look like a little war a war pup, you know, or the war boys when you they're could, little. You could do uh, make him look like a, a feral kid from uh, from Road Warrior. Oh, I like that. Give him a little. Give boomerang. him the big shaggy hair and. Uh, yeah, give him a boomerang. Wasn't a boomerang. was it was it you that made the joke the other day or who was it? <laughs> 
that he <laughs> looks Linda Hunt or whatever. That made me laugh. Linda Hunt looks a little bit like Feral <laughs> Kid. You could tell me Feral Kid was Linda Hunt's uh, uh, brother or something, and I'm like, yeah, I can totally see that. They have a similar kind of like their nose is really high on their face, and yeah. they have that uh, similar look. <laughs> I just kind of wish it wasn't a kid because it's just <laughs> it's just freaky. You know, I don't know. It's, it's freaky. <laughs> yes. So I think what I, I, mean, I want to do is make it look like a a little a little man, like a little Peter Dinklage or something like that. I don't know, <laughs> something like that. You know, like a like a yeah. like a make, I'll it put a, him... make it a little stormtrooper, and then you can say you are a little short for a stormtrooper. <laughs> this one is literally shorter than my full si- or my full size stormtrooper. So yeah. Oh, hilarious! Wow. Uh, well, anyway, Jim, you're awesome. Thank you for that. I don't know what to do with it, but I love it. And uh, hopefully one day, I, I'm going to go down to that place uh, with Kim maybe next week, and we're going to see if I can find like a full size uh, mannequin. See if they have a big one. Yeah. Yeah. And then what do I do with that? I don't know. Dress it up. Weird. Yeah, I don't know. Good luck. I like what you. Yeah, do. I think that's actually creeper than my creepier than my headless mannequin. Mm-hmm. I think you you know the the complete weird child mannequin <laughs> a little creepier than the yeah. partial <laughs> incomplete. It's also proportionally strange. It's not right. That belt, it's the, well, the best part is that freaking silver thing in the middle, which I imagine, oh, I was going to say, is that lets you separate the top half from the bottom? It's but no, literally it just like, uh, there There are these, um, there seams right here, like yeah. it's attached there, but I, I can't tell. Oh, okay. I don't think it's holding anything together. I think it's just like, okay. I don't know why it's there, to be honest. <laughs> it just looks like he's got his, his pants, his, his white pants pulled all the way up above his belly button. Yeah, it's, just, it's, it's like a 1974 uh, science fiction experimental film, and these are the creatures yeah. that walk up and shake your hands, and there's kids in those suits or something. Yeah, see if, see if Taylor can give you some of Anne's old clothes temporarily, at least just to... Oh, uh, that's a good idea. I could put... Uh, yeah. But then that's weird, too. It's just like a kid thing. Uh, it'll at least look better than having this little weird white naked... A featureless mannequin uh, for a while until you figure out what exactly to do with them. That's true. Look, touchdown, yeah. Brian. Touchdown. Touchdown. Yep. Yeah. Well, anyway. Do, 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 do. <laughs> uh, Jim is always the best. So thanks, Jim, for that. I was gone when he brought it by. I wish I'd have been here so he could have experienced my shock. But uh, <laughs> I was out with the with the uh, the babies getting uh, food. Um, oh, nice. Anyway. Uh, oh, speaking of which, so so Phoebe can use a fork. Oh, good. Uh, and feed herself, oh. but she's a mess with it, right? Yeah, of course. Most of kids course. that age can't really do it at all, so we're proud of her that she can grab the fork and kind of stab things and eat it, but she's very sloppy. So we go to this uh, cup bop over here. I told you about you. You've got a cup bop now, I think, right? Didn't they move to We have Denver? a couple cup bops. Yeah, there's one that's not uh, not too far from us um, that I've been to a couple times, and we get we've gotten DoorDash from them. Love it. They're always good, right? Yummy, yummy. Yeah. So never go not there. good. Yeah, never not good. So we go over there. I get what I usually get, and uh, we walk. Uh, we could walk too because we didn't have her car seat, and so we go in there, and she's just little Miss uh, Independent, and you know, bobbling around and wanting to touch everything and do everything. We sit her down, make her a little plate. It's got rice and chicken, and uh, she proceeds to take her fork and go right into the plate and the whole plate goes brah off onto the floor (laughs) so i want to say a personal sorry to everybody that works at the cup bop over there (laughs) i didn't have a great way to clean it up it was fine it all worked out but uh anyway super fun hey brian we got an email from dan chapman somebody we hear from did we hear from this guy once in a while he's a component engineer and uh knows his shit all right i think if you're a component engineer that automatically means you know stuff you know stuff, yes. Here's what he says. Uh, this is about FC, that FCC thing about... Uh, uh, oh, the Scrambler. Right. Scrambler, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. He says, so while listening to TMS today, you covered... Uh, I think he I think he means some, mm-hmm. but he wrote... Extra, s- yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Something. Anyway, RF stuff at, with terrestrial TV and jammers. Not scramblers. A scrambler is for, for security of your transmission, not blocking others. So that's interesting. It's almost like a Faraday cage or... Yeah, yeah. Or the same need... Is a Faraday cage. right? Yeah, the security of your transmission. So yeah, like it's all. It'd be like you. It'd be like you if you didn't want anyone to hear you communicating. You would employ mm-hmm. a scrambler on your end. It wouldn't mess up other people's communication, but they would not be able to tap into yours. They wouldn't be able to access mine. It's almost like encrypting your stream, encrypting your. Right. Your, oh, it is yeah. like a form of. I guess it is kind of encryption, isn't it? Yeah. Well, yeah. we're going to get more emails saying, well, not exactly like a <laughs> Right, exactly. Anyway, a jammer is 100% illegal, he says. 
and can be reported to the FCC, which they will investigate. The penalties for this are significant, so take that into consideration. Uh, you can go to consumercomplaints.fcc.gov. For the TVRF, uh, uh, sorry, for the TVRF, this is not changed, so rabbit ears still work great for the lower really? VHF frequencies uh, that, uh, sorry, that are still used. Most stations have moved uh, more for the UHF frequencies, which the smaller hoop antennas are great for. Oh, that's interesting. I wonder what the round ones are for versus the the square yeah, box I mean, thing. That was, that's basically what it was like. Like you have your um, two through thirteen, was it or fourteen? Whatever the you remember when you had the two different dials. You had the uh, VHF dial and the UHF dial. Mm -hmm. So VHF uh, two through fourteen or fifteen, and then you had like twenty one through. 60 something on the mm. vhf dial the circular ones are i'm sorry for the uhf dial circular ones pick up those signals and then the rabbit ears pick up the um your two through 15 and a, as you say this i'm reminded that to this day yeah. i'm st i still find that all just magic <laughs> it really is the fact that that you bend a metal wire in a different way yeah. and it picks up different frequencies. Now here in Colorado, none of that. They've uh, they've stopped all like all the terrestrials have stopped all broadcasts. There was a whole big thing about this. Says now if you're still getting TV through rabbit ears, that's going to end. And that was gosh, 2015 maybe. It's been a while. Oh really? Um, I didn't know yeah. that. Was that is that a thing? That they're doing everywhere soon, or is that I didn't I know that don't was a know. thing. Yeah, so it must be a state thing. It might be a state thing, but yeah, all the news stations were talking about it for months beforehand, saying, "Now make sure you go get one of these." And that they showed the little flat panel yeah. thing that plugs into your coax that it'll it's still free. You'll still pick up the over the air networks, and it'll be HD and blah blah blah. But uh, yeah, Maybe we did um, that too. It's starting to ring a bell. Maybe we did something similar. There was a warning that yeah. hey, if you're using this, you're going to want to upgrade because HD signals are now going to come over this and. Yep, you can still exactly. get it, but your old your old rabbit ears may not work, kind of thing, or whatever it was. Exactly. Yeah. So, so I don't know if it's if it was uh, nationwide, but it definitely was in Colorado, and definitely uh, had a big stink. There was a big stink over it. Mm, no one likes a big stink. <laughs> Nobody likes a big stink. Uh. So, uh, one other thing I was gonna say about that. What was it? Uh. Bah, bah, bah. Twelve says it was nationwide. Um, oh, was it? It's probably yeah, it turned off analog TV. That was a long time ago. Yeah, I can't remember the year. It was. It, it was. It seems like forever ago. It was a whole pandemic ago. The, <laughs> you thought I had time uh, problems figuring out time and guessing years before Scott. Now yeah. it's like you you put a throw a whole pandemic in there and everything is Rain Man hundred hundred dollars about a hundred dollars about a hundred dollars. Yeah, yeah. That's a great way of saying that. Actually, yeah. I have a hard time Kipper, articulating uh, since it. Two thousand nine. Two thousand nine. Uh, Jeez. Yeah, I had somebody with. Um, they were. It was definitely a, a, a developmentally intellectually disabled person. I'm trying to make sure I get the the language right. Tina's taught me, uh, you know, dealing with the adult protective services. She keeps up on the lingo and helps me with it. But I had somebody who had, I think, fairly severe autism in my mm. car yesterday doing lift. Mm. They got in the car and handed me a, like a business card taped to or a, a paper clip to a five dollar bill. And the business card is upstairs. It says, "Hi, my name is." So and so, um, thank you for participating in the uh, RTD, which is our best thing out here. Um, uh, um, rides for disabled people uh, situation. <laughs> um, it's worded so much better on the card, which I should have brought down. Mm. But uh, so we got in the car, and I said, "How you doing?" And he had um, big headphones on, so I thought, "Okay, so he's either listening to something, or he's um, he's uh, non nonverbal." And as I start driving, maybe a couple minutes into the ride, he starts, and I got to pull up the text because I Googled it because I thought, what is this? Um, so this phrase, okay. when she found out her boyfriend's record deal fell through, she kicked him and his stuff out the door. Whoa. Whoa. And then he repeated it. When she found out her boyfriend's record deal fell through, she kicked him and his stuff out the door. What? what and what? for the next 37 minutes, Scott, from one end of town to the other, <laughs> wow. I never got any more of that story except, well, there'd be bits and pieces like, and his boa constrictor crawled into the vents. And most furnaces have a, um, operate on a such and such. And 
without knowing it, the house was filling with gas. It's like a whole, that's what I'm thinking, like an audio book, that he was listening to an audio book and it was, um, oh, maybe what he was listening to right then. Or yeah. Something. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, I could see that, but I was, Which, that's what I was curious about. So if you Googled that, did you find the reference to I what think, it might I be? I looked to say, oh man, what book, you know, what book did this come from or what story or whatever? And nothing came up for it, unfortunately, but, uh, um, yeah, it was it was interesting. There were points that he'd get uh, that he'd say it, but it was getting like more agitated um, when there was traffic. It mm. seemed he we, he would get more agitated. I would get a little more agitated, but I wouldn't <laughs> wouldn't uh, wouldn't show it. Sure. <clears throat> and then at one point, at one point we go uh, we're on on uh, Broadway and we go by a street and there's a a police car that's about to turn, and he goes a police car, and then he turns around. Oh, good. They're not following us. And then he goes back to repeating the phrase over and over again. Well, I'm also glad I wasn't following you for the record. No, <laughs> well, I mean, what, you know, yeah. I drive very, you know, I'm a very, uh, I'm a very follow the rules y kind of driver, Scott. Yeah. Back to Rain Man, you're a very good driver. Exactly. Yeah. But anyway, yeah, I don't know that, that, uh, mentioning that, that, that reminded me of, uh, of that. But it was interesting. interesting. That is interesting. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Well, I don't want boa constrictors in the air vents, and I—I uh, <laughs> I don't want any of that. Also, drove a guy yesterday that that uh, just got out of jail. Um, he's getting his life back on track. He's living in a sober house. God, really nice guy. And this is a guy that you know, really covered with tattoos and that sort of thing. And were I, um, it just came off with a very intimidating vibe, and sure. might be somebody that I'd be that might. My heckles would go up if I was walking towards, um, and we talked again. It was a long ride. It was another 25 minute ride. And we talked the whole time. Um, absolutely don't judge a book by its cover. This guy was the nicest guy in the world and, and really had some, some crap that he went through in his life. Some, a lot of which he causes and admits he caused sure. or caused, uh, and he's finally getting his life on track. It's really wild. It's, um, yeah, it's funny. You know, some people you're forced in a yeah. yeah, exactly. You're forced in a situation in a car with with uh, uh, with somebody that you would never in a million years talk to otherwise. And um, oh, it's just he had a fascinating story. Wow, that's cool. I had yeah. some good lifting then yesterday as well. Yeah, it was like. good lifting. Good lifting. Had everybody. some good lifting. Yeah, yeah, some real good lifting. A little oh, sore from all that lifting. He does go on to say, lastly, most smart TVs uh, these days have live TV pause, so you can add a USB memory stick to the television. It will kind of like mini DVR That's things. That's interesting. interesting. I, didn't know, so I like, didn't know that. That's crazy. No I didn't idea. know that either. So you, the bigger the the bigger the uh, USB <clears throat> stick you put in there, the more memory, the longer you can pause things for, probably. Yeah, I had no idea. And if that's the case... Um, that explains, I always thought those USB ports were just for like firmware updates or I didn't know what they're for. It sounds like they've got like yeah. a, an actual use. That's interesting. I could use that. I think, huh? For sure. Anyway, there's that. Um, that's cool. thank you, Dan Chapman. Thanks, Dan Chapman. You're the chappiest of all men. <laughs> Let's move on to this one. I got a, uh, a schedule or a, a schedule, uh, a text about weird schedules. <laughs> sure. And, uh, it's just for TMS. It says, this is from Hunter in Canada. Who I uh, because we celebrate all our Canadians, we'll do this. Canada. Here's what he says for TMS. Hi, ski and board. Listening to episode twenty six fourteen. I'm a snowcat operator. Cool. Snowcat. That's, cool, That's cool, man. That's the big yeah. things that um uh, they, they were riding or, snow. Uh, they make snow. Oh, or no, somebody? they just drive around in it. They're the, like a uh, little yeah, like the ones in the uh, whatever the ones in the Shining were kind of. Right, yeah, um, like a little uh, bulldozery kind of thing that uh, that operates on snow. Yeah, a more new version would be like that one that Liam Neeson drives in Snowbound. No, what was that called? We oh, liked it, you and I. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Snow. No. Something snow. I can't remember. Huh. It's good, though. Whatever that one is, yeah, seek yeah, it yeah. out. Whatever it is, it's good. <laughs> it's one of his Taken likes that I freaking liked a lot. Yes, and they're taking likes. Well, well put. <laughs> That's all he makes yeah. now, and it's fine. I actually don't. This yeah. is not a pejorative. Yeah. I'm into him. They're good. No, there was a, there was taken on a train. There was taken in the snow. Yep, I like that. Tra- I love that. Taking likes. That plane one was real good. Cold pursuit. That's it. I core. Thank Cold you. pursuit. Thank you. It's quite good. Anyway, uh, it works on a uh, snow cat there in Canada, and I eat lunch at two a.m. My shift is at midnight. Ten a.m. Grooming the skies. <laughs> Sorry, ski. <laughs> Grooming the ski runs with sun uh, at the Sun Peaks Resort in uh, British Columbia. My partner works at day shift. 
but lives in the UK, so it actually oh, works wow. out so we can chat while working. Uh, P.S. Social life is manageable because I work eight days on and six days off. Plenty of time to uh, oppress drinks. Opre. <laughs> opre? That's uh, French for uh, uh, for after. So uh, oh. opre ski is like uh, after skiing, have a drink. Got it. So Hunter. I think it's, I think it's French for, uh, for after, but I... Uh, but if you're like in Canada after, and your girlfriend or wife or whoever your partner's in partner, yeah. UK, uh-huh. do you guys take your you fly to each other? I assume. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. With the six days off, that probably makes it um, pretty easy. But uh, still, seems long hard. distance relationships. Yeah, seems hard to me. And then you're always got jet lag because you're you're changing your schedule just for six days. I don't know how this works. Yeah. <laughs> Amy confirms. We oui, après means after. Thank right. you, uh, thank you, Amy. Thank you, anyone who knows French, because I don't. Yep. Uh, all right, there's that. We also in, got in Colorado with all the ski resorts. Well, you got to know this too. Après ski is after skiing. Yeah, I'll learn that. I'll, I'll know that now. Now you know it. Yeah, never heard of that before. Here's one from Mark. Uh, it's an email about other ways to sleep at night. Brian uses an app. I listen to some. Uh, uh, lately, it's some Dune. Some. Things. <laughs> not that not that weird sound but i like this like uh there's this one where it's just meditative like desert music i listen to that it's yeah r- really good nice. anyway brown noise whatever he says hey emperor and heretic oh we're on we're on uh on mm. on uh, theme here yeah okay on the subject of listening to podcasts he's gonna, up your, he's gonna use you up your two mentions i know be careful i know we gotta be careful here <laughs> <laughs> On the subject of listening to podcasts to fall asleep to, don't feel bad because someone falls asleep to film sack. Listening to lighthearted group of friends chatting about your favorite subject helps to not think about the stress of today or tomorrow, he says. Well, I agree with that. Cool. Yeah. So, so here's a tip. If brown noise doesn't do it for you anymore, I suppose it could wear off. Mm-hmm. I myself fall asleep to Luton who posts mm-hmm. one plus hour long Warhammer 40k lore videos on YouTube. Never played Warhammer 40K, but damn, do I love the lore. Love the content, Mark. So that's you know, just listening to just, like, the Horus Heresy just, happened in the year 40,022 when the God Emperor Zip Zap, like that's a that's what that is. One, just saying the phrase, one hour long Warhammer 40K lore videos, I'm already tired. Like hearing <laughs> just, just those eight words together makes me uh, fall asleep. We found Brian's nap word. Oh, forty k Warhammer lore video, like the Warhammer lore videos. Boom, that's all I needed to hear. Done. And I love Warhammer, so I would I would probably enjoy this, but I'd never thought to listen to it to sleep. So I think World of Warcraft lore videos would, or uh, yeah, videos would do the same thing for me. Yeah, I got hooked on this new game called um, Boar. Oh, what is it? Shoot, Boar something. Boar, not ah. the boar worms. Boar game Steam. I cannot remember the last part of it. Boar something. Boar. Boar blasters. Boar blasters. So, okay. All right. <laughs> this thing just came out. It's, um, I'll put up a little Steam page for the chat. It's this, like, you're in this, you're, you're, you work with a bunch of dwarves and you, you're in a, like, a helicopter subterranean vehicle and mm-hmm. you take this thing down into, uh, the deep dark dirt of a, of like an asteroid. And your goal is to get as many gems as you can while you're in there. Um, you got a bunch of upgrades as you go. And you uh, collect these gems and then you take to the surface and you use the money from those gems to upgrade your stuff. So that might be more damaging weapons or longer time uh, under there or w- whatever it is. Yeah. Uh, yeah. More, it can take more damage, that sort of thing. And then you, you find treasure. You find all this stuff. There's quests to do. And I am so hopelessly addicted to board last <laughs> <laughs> I can't stop playing it. It's so good. So it there's sounds a little, like Dig Dug. Ugh. I mean, what a what a Dig Dug rip off. In some ways, that's what I love. Like, I've always had a thing for digging down in games. I love. Yeah. I don't know what it is. Subterranean. Let's go underground games. Some of my favorites. Um, and even like when I play Minecraft, I don't want to spend much time on the surface. I want to go down. And I want to do that here, and I want to do that in those uh, those uh, D- uh, Steam World Dig games. You know, I just want to keep going. And this is like that. You're just like, oh, I'm oh this dig. is really and cool looking. Huh. It's a rad little game. Plays great on yeah. Steam Deck too. So I played that in bed until probably 1 a.m. and that was stupid. <laughs> now my neck kind of hurts right here. 
Yeah, it reminds me. What is, you know, what reminds me of um, Scramble, the the old uh, arcade game Scramble, where you'd. Uh, but that was you were on a path, going through like mines and stuff shaped like this, and you'd have to shoot things on the ground and. and yeah, uh, you went left to right, I think, in Scramble, and you had. I think so. Yeah, you're right though. It was like and caves, stalactites. It followed a path. It was caves. Yeah, you followed yeah. a path and just. Uh, yeah. Uh, shot the things that were shooting at you yeah this one gets pretty crazy there have been some like i just did one where certain blocks because you blow them you're blowing everything up all the all the extra mm -hmm. you know terrain and some of them are full of bee, like bees or flies <laughs> so there is a there you can you can shoot the wrong thing and have bad things happen it's oh, not all just the blow time. everything up all our robotron all the time there's kind of like weird weird stuff will come out of rocks you're like holy shit this place is full of aliens i can't just shoot rocks i also have to fight these creatures and you die early oh, but you always get to keep whatever you earn so far even if you fail to run it's really good and they're working on some kind of endless mode which sounds like it'll be amazing anyway very good. I've probably played, nice. I don't know, seven hours of that yeah, so far. <laughs> nice. Little side recommendation. Let's get to the oh. news, which we didn't do yesterday, so today no. we're doing it. Here it is. <laughs> time for the news brought to you by. We're brought to you by Coverville today at noon, mountain time, twitch.tv slash Coverville. Uh, tributes, a couple tributes uh, this time around. One for Steve Harley and Cockney Rebel. One one hit wonder, uh, at least here in the U.S., known for a song called Make Me Smile, Come Up and See Me. But uh, they've also done a couple covers themselves, so we'll have a, a little short set paying tribute to Steve Harley. The big part, the bulk of the show, will be um, celebrating the life and music of Carl Wallinger. He was a member of the Waterboys for a little while, but you best know Carl from his uh, music uh, as part of World Party. Things like Put the Message, Put the Message in the Box put the box oh, into a car all okay, that, I know that and one. is it like today and oh a ship of fools she's the one the theme song to the movie was the movie called she's the one no the movie was uh beautiful girls right with uh i can't think of it uh a bunch of people no, from she, that time i think she, she's the one that's a different song yeah, a different one. Um, anyway, that's uh, all of that coming up at, um, <clears throat> at noon today, twitch.tv slash Coverville. Believe me, if you if you don't think you're familiar with with Carl Wallinger's music and World Party, um, I guarantee if you were alive in the 90s uh, and listened to radio, regular alternative radio or pop or whatever, you would absolutely hear, um, you've heard a lot of World Party's music. Well, I definitely existed in that decade, so... I will check it yeah. out. Today at noon, everybody. Coverville, yeah. uh, or sorry, Coverville on Twitch. Twitch.tv. Coverville, Coverville on Twitch. That's Here right. is a story about a Lincoln woman, not Mary Todd Lincoln, but a lady in Lincoln. <laughs> a uh, woman from Lincoln, Nebraska. Okay, good. Whew. Yep. Uh, it says here, here's the headline. Lincoln woman exploits pump glitch to get over $27,000 in free gas. She, she, she hacked okay. the gas station. I kind of want to know what this hack is because I could use the savings. Jeez, no kidding. Uh, let's see. Gas station in Lincoln. I assume this is Nebraska. It looks so. like it, yeah. Uh, has fixed a glitch, or sorry, has fi uh, a gas station in Lincoln has fixed a glitch that allowed people to pump thousands of gallons of fuel for free. Don Thompson, age 45, aren't they always, is charged with one count of theft by unlawfully taking five grand plus, although up top it said 27,000, so I don't know yeah, why. Yeah, just the law starts at five grand, so whatever, if you steal anything over five grand, this oh. is the unlawful taking of, of $5,000 or plus of merchandise or whatever. Really? Because I'd stop at 4999 <laughs> It's almost like, like you're doing the gas pump thing, like... Like you're like do a pull a little trigger just to get to the right number. Okay, done. Yep. <laughs> that was such a fun game back when you were in high school and you could only afford you, five bucks in gas or whatever. You only have two dollars in yeah. your pocket. You'd, yeah. Exactly. I love that because you didn't prepay back then, <laughs> so you'd be just like zip 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 zip. And if you went over, it was the worst. One. Yeah. Uh, right. <laughs> but if you hit it, you were like yeah, and your friends are yeah. like woo. It was the it was an amazing oh stupid thing to get excited. There's about. a whole generation of kids who've never experienced that and and uh, don't know what it's like. Yeah, what do you guys do now? Like if you're a let's say you're I don't know you're a, you're 16, you're just using your parents' card or something and paying them back, aren't you? You're not even yeah probably or get, or the parents are or uh, I mean it's a big assumption. I think that there are kids who are having to pay their own gas for sure. Get oh their yeah, car and it's yeah. like. 
I've only got five bucks until the next paycheck, but they probably got a credit card, and so they're just racking up racking up credit card debt. Yeah. I mean, we were, my kids, when they were teenagers, I think Venmo had just started to sort of be a thing. Mm-hmm. And so anytime, pretty sure we did it that way. I think we gave Carter or Taylor a card, and then she would use, she'd fill up gas and then Venmo us the amount. I think that's mm-hmm. what we did. Mm-hmm. And that seemed, makes sense, and I would probably do that today if I had kids driving in. That's a kids. good way to do it. Yeah. 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 And it wasn't right. just analog, George. Back in the day, we had digital, but it was it was still this thing where if you had two bucks in your pocket, like Brian said, or if you had 75 cents and it's all you could afford, <laughs> you would you just, just need to get to school. <laughs> right. Exactly. Yeah. You pull that you finger. And you'd go. <laughs> yeah. This is this amazing mini game. I, you know what? It's, really I'm was. having all kinds of nostalgia about that. I love that. I think uh, you need to develop a Steam game that is uh, <laughs> gas pumping or something like that. Uh, yeah, gas like pump a, simulator. Well, that's the other thing I've been playing is this uh, light. Uh, was it something Lightyear? No, Lightyear. Lightyear Frontier. Uh, it's on Game Pass as well as Steam in early access. But basically, it's uh, you're you're you land on a planet. You're there alone, and you're in a mech, and you mm-hmm. establish a farmstead, and you farm in a mech. Brian, you're wearing oh, a that's mech. That's cool. Yep, that's, and you're you're yeah, out looking awesome. for stone, and you're and cutting down trees and all this, and there's nothing to kill. It's a very chill farming simulator, but you do it in a freaking mech, and it's amazing. I'm so in love with it so far. Anyway, wow, that's enough cool. about games. Tune into Core tonight, 5 p.m. Mountain Time, and uh, you'll hear yeah. all about it. Uh, anyway, she's charged for this, and uh, police said she used the exploit to pump free gas for more than six months. She probably thought she was forever going to get. I wonder away how with she this. figured it out because obviously it wasn't giving it to everybody. So, yeah, well, you know, she figured out that if she entered in a certain code on the keypad or something, or uh, this place is called a pump see. and pump and pantry. By the way, I love that. Great pump name, and pantry. Yeah, oh, you need food. It's we got still you. better than come and go. <laughs> <laughs> yep, about to be Maverick though. They're going to change it. Yep. Uh, oh, I heard from uh, John uh, Pryor in, uh, uh, down there at Doghouse Systems. He heard about our discussion regarding uh, what was the name of the place that everybody wants to go, and you have one in Denver now? Oh, the Bucky's. Bucky's. Yeah. He's like, yeah. dude, you gotta go to Bucky's. I'll fly you to Texas. <laughs> He's like so excited to see have me see a Bucky's, and they showed me all the swag he got from Bucky's. He's got pictures of his first visit to a Bucky's. <laughs> <laughs> like apparently it's a real thing like they're really oh, awesome. big on it down there it's not just like oh, a the guy who um he uh, the guy who, like just call me crash is that him because i think he oh no not him there was somebody who sent me um photos this is just, took this is just john a dog house it's just the owner of dog house so nope, not run fish golly i can't figure out who is yeah uh, well i wonder if he i wonder if i know him as something else because he had pictures with himself, himself and the big oh. statue, the Bucky's statue in the front of the place. That's what I'm wondering. If oh, I'd have to guy. ask him. I don't know. I don't think so. Yeah. But mm. that'd be that'd be great. The CEO of Doghouse taking pictures and sending taking them secretly with to the Brian. Uh, yeah. <laughs> that'd be great. Um, well, anyway, let's see. The manager got word from the pump and dump or the pump and pantry. Sorry, uh, <laughs> that there's something been going on. They were participating in this fuel scam. Uh, they did some further investigation. Police learned that the fuel pumps received a software update in November of 2022. The update managed orders and reward cards, and it was made uh, at the request of the customers and staff. Unbeknownst to the company, however, the update was exploitable, allowed anyone to swipe a rewards card twice to enter the pump into a demo mode. From there, the user could pump gas for free. So wow. it's like a test. That's a bad test mode. I feel like the software developers are as much to blame for this as as this woman is because make your you know make your getting into demo mode require a lot more than just oh did my card go in I'm gonna do it again now I'm in demo mode right it feels Lame. like uh, I agree that's bad design dude yeah which yeah. I, you know they patched but still like when when was that a good idea that was never a good idea. Uh, the loss prevention wow. manager discovered the particular card had been repeatedly used for free gas by tracing the card's information. Police were able to identify Thompson according to court records. Video surveillance showed her pumping fuel into her vehicle on multiple occasions. I would assume that's because she's driving and running out of gas. So she put, you yeah, know, I think that's why coming back. multiple occasions. Yeah, yeah, weird. Police think the fuel was stolen between November uh, 13th of 2022 and June 1st of 2023. In those months, 
The rewards card was used 510 times. Well, that tells me <laughs> she also used it for friends. Is my Everybody guess. she knew got free gas. Yep. Yeah, you got a yeah, you got a you got a lawnmower. Need some gas? Come on, with, come with me. <laughs> so seven months. Let's see, June or uh, I'm sorry, eight, well, about seven and a half months, right? November 13th to June 1st. Yeah. The following year. Um, it's a lot. How they're dumb for not noticing it before that. <laughs> I agree. I completely agree. They're not paying attention at all. Yeah. I think you get lazy about how systems work at companies like yeah. that, and you just, everything's going good. You know, it's yeah, not like they have exactly. IT specialists on site. So I think that sort of thing just happens. I think so they'll learn actually their lesson. Six and a half months because none of June. So half of November, right. and all of December, January, February, March, April, and May. Yep. Mm -hmm. It says here estimated 7,000. 413.59 gallons. That's a lot of gallons of gas. Yeah. Uh, the manager estimated the average fuel cost between those months to be 375 or so per gallon, bringing total losses to $27,860.27. Oof. Yep. Try fingering that yeah. carefully. <laughs> Uh, that's a fun one. Let's try this one. Red panda. You know the red pandas? They're real cute. Yeah. 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 We have them. Like, we like have in them. the movie Turning Red. <laughs> oh, there you go. That's a good ex uh, example. We have we have them here at our local zoo, but they don't come out very much. And they even have a sign that says, uh, "Red pandas are rare to see because they don't yeah. they don't like uh, to come out and look at people. They want to stay in their sure. little place." Oh, I get you. Yeah, we're introverted. Yeah, they're <laughs> introverted also, animals. There's also something with temperatures. At certain times of year, you're never going to see them or something. But anyway, sure. Uh, a red panda was found in luggage at the Bangkok airport. Oh, Bangkok! Oh, no, what are you doing? Well, there you go. Six Indian nationals. I used to say dot not feather, but I don't do that anymore. <laughs> Okay. Didn't you just kind of do it by saying you don't do it? Kind of. <laughs> but I'm telling you people at home, I don't say that anymore. Okay. I don't say dot, dot, not feather anymore. <laughs> uh, six, <laughs> six Indian nationals have been arrested at Bangkok's International Airport for attempting to smuggle a red panda and dozens of other animals out of the country. Boy, they hit the headline there. Yeah, no kidding. And dozens of other animals. Wow. Snakes, parrots. In a giant arc. Yep. <laughs> Snakes, parrots, monitor lizards. Those are big mm. lizards. Um, we're well, among... I have a 17-inch monitor lizard. It's really nice. It's a... <laughs> yeah, but you have to degauss it. That's not fun. Yeah, yeah. Can't keep any magnets near the 17-inch 17 17-inch monitor yeah, lizard. Yeah, never do that. You get permanent distortion or recticolor. I'd really like to get a curved monitor lizard, but yeah. Uh, yeah They're expensive, dude. It. Very expensive. Yeah, they are. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But uh, get an OLED 260 hertz monitor lizard. <laughs> 4K monitor lizard. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, these are among 87 animals seized at the, I'm not going to say this right, Suvarnabahunimi. How would you say that airport, Brian? That's a challenge. I have to find it. Um, 87 is second line or second. Oh, there paragraph. it is right there. All right. So Suvarna Bumi. Suvarna Bumi. I think you got it. That's a big one. That's a hard that one. That is a big one. That's a lot. It's a, that's a, uh, put that on a triple word score and uh, win the game. <laughs> uh, they were allegedly discovered in a suspect's checked luggage as they tried to fly to Mumbai. The suspects face a maximum of 10 years behind bars. The Thai Customs uh, Department released photos showing the red panda, an endangered species, inside a basket, and a parrot shut in a plastic container. Uh, snakes were co uh, coiled together in cloth bags. Oh, my God. Rude. Jeez. Rude. Yeah. Uh, Thailand is a major transit hub for wildlife smugglers. The animals are used, uh, are, are, sorry, are usually sold in China or Vietnam, sometimes India. It has become a wildly growing market in India. People are buying these animals like crazy. Don't put your parrots in Tupperware. That's right. Not cool. Not cool. Do Don't they put, burp when you open the lid a little bit? They uh, go, it goes burp. <laughs> just says burp. <laughs> All they want to burp. <laughs> All they want to kill you as soon as I get out. <laughs> birds, birds, to this day, birds that can talk and mimic freak me the yeah. F out. They yeah, freak me out. I know they out. do. I know you, you, you see a lot of those videos and send them to me, or used to anyway, as no. it's been a while, but... Dude, listen to this minor bird. I know. <laughs> or a crow that goes, Hello. Hola. Hola. It's like, stop it. You're not supposed to talk. Yeah. That's that's freaking weird, man. That's our world. That's our territory. And then when you think about the fact that birds evolved from dinosaurs, that's even freakier. Mm. 
You're yeah. telling me had things gone just a little different, little DNA to the left or whatever, we'd have dinosaurs talking to us going, hola. It's like freaking F off. I don't yeah. want that in and my life. And it's not just if it was it just because it's birds. If dolphins all of a sudden started talking, we'd be freaked out. Everybody would be yeah. freaked out. Yeah, no. Yeah. I, are you kidding me? Oh, my gosh. Imagine. <laughs> and they're supposed to be so, super smart as well, right? Yeah. So dolphins if, are smart. If there's an animal that could figure out uh, how our language and how to replicate it, it's dolphins. Yeah. What if they popped out and went, no more fish? <laughs> and just said it in like perfect English, you know? Right, exactly. Ugh. Clean up the water. You guys are making a big mess. Uh, Get your microplastics out of here. John Madaco says the dolphins do talk, they just don't speak English. Yeah, no, I'm talking about English. Well, yeah. Yeah, they were saying That's if the they point. actually learned our language. Is, yeah. yeah, yeah, I understand they communicate. I get it. Mm -hmm. My dog mm -hmm. communicates and can. Mm -hmm. And dogs can. I get that. But never once has my dog said, I'd like beef instead of chicken. Puppy Kitty Trout, love that name, says, what animal wouldn't freak you out if it started talking? And I don't think there's a single animal that if it started talking would not freak me out. There's nothing. I think. Um, no, yeah, Brian's right. Yeah. Yeah, they would all freak me out. I mean, if a gorilla suddenly started talking, which is our closest, uh, you know, uh, genetic yeah. relative, I would probably uh, just completely freak me out. Like yeah. when even when I see him talking in like Tarzan, the Disney movie. Kerchak voiced by Lance Henriksen. You know? <laughs> he's like, "Well, we're moving the we're moving the the herd or the pack or the whatever they call themselves to the other thing." Yeah. If if a real one did that, like Diane Fossey sitting there poking around with gorillas, and one of them went, mm -hmm. "Diane, enough with the photos or whatever," <laughs> I'd go, "Shit, <laughs> enough, done. That's it. We're out. We're done." I don't know why it's uh, so crazy. Tina <laughs> will be happy to tell this story to anybody uh, who sees her in Vegas. And she'll confirm it that um, we had a cat named Juliet when when Tina and I started dating. When we got married, we had a cat named Juliet, and uh, Juliet was long hair, very similar in look to uh, Inara, but a lot smaller. Yeah. And at night, she started making this this weird howling noise, where we're both listening and we're sure she said, "Brian." Brian. Oh shit. Brian. I don't like it. And repeating it. And she will 100% like this. This was, this freaked us out. Those were multiple nights. Freaked us out. And it she is, will absolutely confirm that, that this is a, this was a, that thing. is freaky. I don't like it. Even if it's a total happenstance, <laughs> it's mimicking or coincidence. Yeah. yeah exactly. Or a cat kind of yeah. sounds like it's always saying Brian a little bit. I don't care. If it says, if there's a B in the, its pronunciation. Mm hmm. F that cat. I don't yeah, want anything yeah. to do with your animals that talk. It freaked me out. Yeah. BioCal says, would you freak out more if your cat started talking or your couch? Oh, no. I'd freak out more. I don't know if the couch would freak out, but I would freak yeah, out more. Yeah, you would freak out more than the couch talking. would. Yeah, the couch yeah, would be for fine. Sure. For sure. Yeah. Phrasing. Oh, I see what he means. If the <laughs> couch was talking, I see. Wow. Well, the joke is. Uh, you that... see what that deal is there. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah that would freak me out also um i don't want to hear a crow say hola again i don't like it because mm. hola? they do it low they go hola 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 yeah. don't like it uh <laughs> all right here's uh oh and so they they're in trouble they're going to jail and that's good that's that's how that should turn out these people should go to jail for taking these animals yes. Sure. Um, <clears throat> final story. They should, and they should get put. They should get taken to jail in a little plastic uh, tub, a sealed plastic container. I like it, or a bag. Yeah, some sort of sack, or a bag coiled together in a bag with a bunch of snakes. That's right. <laughs> That's right, man. Yeah. Like these these animals. I mean, look, I'm. I I cannot like animal cruelty. Can't do it. I'll eat a chicken. I'll eat a burger. Been... I'll eat food that I don't didn't have to watch die. Oh yeah. I'll yeah, do yeah, that, yeah. but. But I don't want to. I don't want to, I don't want cruel and unusual anything. I don't want anybody picking no, on no animals. No. I, exactly. If I could go back in time and tell that friend of mine not to suck the dog nipple, I would. That wasn't very mm -hmm. nice either. <laughs> I don't know. The dog might have enjoyed it. I don't. We don't know. They can't talk. They can't tell us. Thank goodness they can't. Good lord. Yeah. Oh yeah. No, yeah, that would be. <laughs> if that i could talk by the way I, i've been holding the story to myself for a long time but uh i think the truth can finally come out this this kid over here sucked my nipple yeah. when i was uh he's now an attorney he's a partner he's at now this an firm. attorney uh, and, uh, <laughs> well he sucked my nipple for a dollar and uh we've never quite gotten over it here in the dog world yeah 
I'm glad the truth can finally come out, though. Here's yes. a story about a, a male humanoid <laughs> robot. We love robots, uh, but maybe we don't love this one. Uh, a male humanoid robot was unveiled in Saudi Arabia and then inappropriately, like immediately inappropriately, touched a female reporter on the butt. <laughs> <laughs> no, Chappie, no! <laughs> Don't do that. Bad Chappie! <laughs> I'm going to pull up video. There's video of this. Okay. Uh, butt touching. Excellent. I love, I love the fact that we get butt. Oh, God, this thing is creepy looking. I don't like it at all. It's no. very creepy. Yeah, it's almost worse than... Where's the video? Media not supported. Hello. Okay. Oh, uh, okay. It was, uh, like disturbing Uncanny Valley stuff going on there. We don't need to make animatronic animatronic hall of presidents looking robots yeah let our robots look like c-3po and uh uh <laughs> yeah like that yeah stuff where it's yeah. clearly a metal dude um yeah not a skin tight looking man i don't want that exactly there's, um, there's a reason that we like our uh echo devices to look like tall black cylinders that's we right we don't want it to look like a little miniature person 100 percent. if you scroll down you'll see this lady in the blue pantsuit uh, talking she's got a she's a, some sort of reporter and uh the the brief video just shows this robot for no reason just suddenly its hand goes forward and touches her butt <laughs> not cool oh not cool not cool at all i don't like it no sir i don't yeah saudi arabia you already got a bad rep what are you doing over there yeah uh finally Toyota engineers develop a vehicle inspired by Pokemon character. You like Poke? Ooh, you like the Pokemon? Yeah. All right. Without looking at the article, is it a Pikachu? Do they no. just go Pikachu? It is. No, not. really. No. Okay. It is a Miradon. Miri Miriadon. Sorry, Miriadon. Really? Okay. Um, I'm pulling it up here. There's a photo. There you go, Chad. Mer Miradon. Oh, interesting. Yeah, all look right. at that yeah, thing. I see this too. Pretty gnarly. Uh, oh, I know. <laughs> it's yeah, not, it's not quite I want what you one thought. Now. <laughs> yeah, you were thinking like, oh, it'd be like a Pikachu front end with the eyeballs, was, and I've you know. seen people do that. They have a yellow Volkswagen or a, or a little yellow uh, uh, MG uh, Mini or not MG Mini, but a Mini Mini Cooper, and mm -hmm. then they put little Pokemon logos, uh, uh, eyes, and stuff on it, which is cute. Yeah, this thing. Where yeah. do I sign up? Yeah, is where it do EV? Yeah, how do I get? How do I? How am I able to retrieve this to be in my life? Does it run like a, like a tiger? <laughs> like a jaguar? Uh, I, want it. I do too. It says uh, Toyota engineers developed the vehicle inspired by the Pokemon character. Toyota uh, has developed this vehicle. Uh, the character, let's see, from the series, blah blah blah. The, okay, the vehicle will be on display in the Tokyo Midtown Hibaya Hib Hibia complex. Hibaya? I don't know. Sure. Uh, for three days from Friday, visitors will be allowed to ride it to feel as if they are in a Pokemon universe. Oh. Mm -hmm. Toyota Engineering uh, Society, a group of Toyota engineers and employees, launched the uh, the Myriadon vehicle project based on a survey of about 8,000 elementary school ki kids. Oh, kids. Because the kids good. want it, you know? Well, yeah, they picked, they picked it. Good. Good choice, kids. Yeah, good Thanks job. Thanks for not picking... Uh, Slowbro or, uh, <laughs> or Snorlax or something. Good point. Uh, yeah. Let's see. That's four legs, a four leg mode and a two wheel drive mode. It can travel at a speed of about three kilometers per hour. It's not very fast. It will be on public display in the drive mode, uh, in the drive mode at a media event on Thursday. And it slowly walked in the four legged mode so people could see it walking around. I don't know. I think that kind of stuff's kind of cool. Oh, for you sure. Know, yeah. Just it's well not practical. It's not practical, but no, no. You know, not gonna... what is? <laughs> yeah. At the end of the day, what's really practical? What anyway? is? Oh man, they got philosophical all of a sudden. I know. I feel like yeah. we're gonna we owe somebody an apology or something for how <laughs> somebody's gonna need therapy. Uh, oh, good thing. Yeah. Uh, Brian, let's play or let's do a song because we got Wendy coming up and we got to prepare, and the only way to do it is to play a song. So do that for sure. This is um this is one of those um, things where I look at the headline and think one thing until I start reading the copy of the uh, the, the PR release uh, and find out something completely different. B um, PR company The Syndicate sent me this one. Uh, French Cassettes have a third album coming out. At first, I thought it was a French band named Cassettes, but no, they are a <laughs> Bay Area band called French Cassettes. Um, the third album is coming out. It's called Benzene. It comes out June 7th via Tender Loving Empire. <laughs> this is the, the new single, the first single from the album. Here are 
French cassettes. We'll be right oh, back. Say the name oh. of the song. White yeah. noise. Oh, white, white noise. noise. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah white noise. A, white noise. French cassettes. In the middle of it, there's a scream, a random scream. <laughs> oh, good. Thanks for the warning. Actually, that's great. <laughs> no problem. All right, everybody. Here it is. We'll be back in a minute with Wendy. Stay tuned. If you try to sell me a flower while I'm eating my chicken parm, you better cover your balls. Never thought I'd say this, but I like the cut of your jib. And we're back. Tell me who that was again. Yeah, that's a band called French Cassettes. Not a good thing to do with your cassette, by the way. They have a new album coming out this June. It's called Benzene, and uh, that's the first single. It's called White Noise. Nice. White Noise. Benzene on the periodic table of elements, I think. It's a, it's a, it's a, uh, uh, <laughs> it's a noble gas. Yeah. I don't know. I have no idea. Most gases. I don't gases... think benzene is. is it? I don't think benzene is a thing. Is it not a noble gas? I don't know. I don't even think it's an element. Is there an element called benzene? I only do. I only do noble gases. I can't explain. <laughs> uh, hey, look what we got. I prefer my gas is noble. Thank you. Yeah, very much. only noble gases out of my body. Thank you. Here is another Minnesota tradition that's not so easy to throw in the garbage. Oh, uh, look who it is! It's Wendy from Minnesota. Where did uh, you get that? That's I got awesome. that off an of episode of King of the Hill. She kept, she was talking about Ludafisk and. Uh, or if, yeah, in oh, fact, yeah. here's I'll play that one for you here. I've prepared a little taste of Minnesota called Lutefisk. That's a fun one. Ugh. That's supposedly yeah, that's some that's some famous actress, but I don't know who it is. I can't tell you who that was. Somebody cool though. Um, P.S. If you ever come to the Minneapolis airport, there will be an announcement about your baggage, and do not leave it un um attended to. And it is the greatest announcement you'll ever hear. I want to oh, really? hear it. What is it? What is it? Easily. An 85-year-old man. It's like definitely an old guy voice and it, the thickest Minnesota accent. So how you you always know it's Minnesota's they pronounce words with A G like flag and bag. They say big and flag. Okay, <laughs> okay good. Yep. So you imagine this announcement it. that uses the word big or biggage 80 times. Really? So amazing. So it's like make oh, sure God. make sure your big has been with you the whole time. Make that. sure you're big. And it's <laughs> the guy is so old. It sounds like your grandpa telling you, like, don't leave your bigs in the hall. It's so funny. Anyway, right, if I someone just, asks you to carry know. some loot fix loot fisk in your bag, uh, you don't know them. Don't let them. Yeah. Don't do it. Don't That's great. Do it. I need to <laughs> I need to hear your big. that. That's amazing. I love it. I feel like uh, Fargo has really put the accent on the map. Would you guys agree? I agree. Oh, sure. Oh, yeah. 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 To People me, it's like um, it. it's like what uh, 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 Paul Hogan did for the Australian accent in the 80s. Just brought it to us. <laughs> it really did. Like, yeah. This is amazing. Yeah, yeah totally. I, I, it makes me crack up. And sometimes I think I'm being punked right now. Sometimes the way people are speaking, mm. like this can't be real. Yeah. Have but you guys watched? Is. Have you guys watched that whole ser series? By the way, the Fargo series. <clears throat> you should. I have not. Oh, you should. I know he's not asking me because he knows I have. Yeah, I know. Brian oh, you has. have. I have not. We haven't even watched one. I I know we should. What? You, re you really should. You really should. You've seen the movie though. It. You've seen the movie, right? I know. You I haven't know. seen the movie? You don't? <laughs> oh my gosh! Oh. Listen, guys, I've only seen the part where they put the wood chipper, the person in the wood chipper. That's the only thing I've seen. <laughs> the person. Oh my gosh! This, this is. This, it feels like. Uh, how do we do this, Scott? How do we? Uh, how do you intervene? Uh, how do we intervention? And, and like make her like watch with her the entirety of the Fargo <laughs> movie and all and every series, every uh, season. I mean, we've never done a therapy Thursday on interventions. Maybe this is our chance. You know. Too, yeah, yeah you so. guys intervene that I haven't seen Fargo. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're missing out. Best show on TV. Uh, all right, <laughs> and one of the greatest films ever made. I'm going to now uh, dive right into the therapy Thursday. Uh, so it turns out. My sister here, Wendy, who is an actual therapist, helps real people all the time with real problems, is here today to answer this question. And uh, we got an anonymous listener who sent in the following. It says, hey, guys. I'm going to turn this down. There we go. Hey, guys. I have a topic for Wendy to talk about, which might be something many people may need to deal with. I will explain. I'm Jewish, and one of my best friends of 40-plus years is half Pakistanian. Or is it Pakistanian? I don't know. Hmm. Obviously, we know of the war going on with Israel, the terrorism from Hamas, the destruction of Gaza, etc. I rarely share anything political-ish on social media, and neither does he. But lately, he has been sharing a lot about the Palestine stuff, some of which I do not fully agree with, and some of which is straight-up misinformation. 
He's gotten pulled into an emotional roller coaster with conspiracy theories about things on that front. I don't think we've ever, sorry, I don't think we've really ever spoken about this issue uh, on the whole before, but he's never been so active in his outwardness about it. Some of it is very disheartening. We see each other often, virtually at least. We play D&D online every week and in person a couple of times a year. So what I want to know is this. How do I deal with a different set of beliefs from someone you have a good, close relationship with? I realize this might be similar to regular political beliefs we've seen ramp up in the Trump era, but when you sit close together in beliefs in many other things, except for one very specific thing, it feels different. Uh, Perhaps this is a good topic heading into the holidays. This is a little bit of an older email. Uh, Overall, as people see family and friends who they may not see eye to eye with on uh, issues, including this one. Thanks, guys. Uh, I think it's a great email and um, yeah. uh, timely. Uh, this, this the yeah. conflict that was happening right before the holidays is still happening. Um, probably never stopped and, happening, but the you know the one and in- you know with the with election season coming up soon, we're going to have a similar thing with that's you know not not about the uh, Israel Palestine Palestinian uh, thing going on the conflict. It's going to be about uh, you know being red and blue and and all that. So. Yeah. So what do you do, Wendy, when you've got a friend who is pretty much just like you in almost every way up and down but they got this one little thing this little crack in the cement that's just throwing you what do you do well let's first talk about why having so much in common makes somebody a friend Mm -hmm. right so we already Mm -hmm. have half palestinian half jewish Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so i i don't i can't tell if they're both american or some other, mm. they live somewhere else. I assume they're sure. not living there. Is was would be my guess. Sure. <clears throat> so you have um, maybe some shared. We both don't live in our homelands uh, or whatever. So there could be some connection that way. It'd be interesting to know how they know each other specifically. But let's just talk about that general premise for a moment. Why do we like to be about around people who are like us? What do you guys think? Oh. Um to uh kind of reinforce make us feel like we're we're support us in the things that we believe you know we like to have that that sounding board we like people of a common frame of mind not just about uh, feel the way they feel about certain topics but also um their their level of <laughs> anger or joy at, at those certain things i assume it's very uh, tribal like you're in my camp you yeah you, yeah. you and i are the They'll same my back. Yeah, yeah or something like that Does that sound yeah. right so yeah so it's very it's very bonding so let's just talk i just want to talk about the, the biochemical response to someone like me because the truth is when you're with someone who's really too much like you, you usually don't like each other. Have you ever noticed that? Mm, yeah, I have. Like you that. both play the same role and you're competing for being the jokester or you're both pl- competing for being the nice one or whatever, you know, like when you're a little too alike or, or sometimes in families, you'll see that. Um, <clears throat> like uh, you'll get along better with one parent over the other because the one parent's too much like you and the other parent is the opposite and you like that, you know? Mm-hmm. So sometimes there's that. That actual dynamic when you're too similar to someone as you can, it can be um, tricky, but usually what it is, it's, it's both similar and complementary, and there's something that happens in us. And you're right, Scott, it's, it's pretty tribal in terms of what it, uh, what it's for, why we need it and how it gets created. But it, but let's just take it from a biological level. When I say, okay, you guys fill in the fandom. Okay. So when I say I'm really into blank. Mm. Star Wars. Really? Sure. Star Wars. I'm really into Star yeah. Wars. And sure. somebody else says, Ooh, Star uh, Trek's better. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> or they say, I don't even like Star Trek. And you're like, I said Star Wars. You're like, whatever. Okay, how about that? The, they're the same thing, aren't they? <laughs> yeah. So what happens to you viscerally? It's like this works for you too. You like Star Wars. Sure. And I'm like, you know what? Star Wars is just ripping off the um the hero's journey. And sure. it's like the, the so seven samurai, trippy, the, yeah. ridiculous. Yeah. yeah. Like yeah. you're lame for liking that. It's what just the Akira Kurosawa film and they just modernize it, put sci-fi <laughs> elements on it. Okay. So how does it make you feel? What happens to your body? Oh, geez. The first, I mean, initially we've, we've, I think Scott and I both had grown thick skin because of this that we just know there's, there's things that we really like that people in our, in the community won't like or don't like. And that's completely sure. fine. But probably the first time it was like a, 
oh, how can you not like that? Oh, I don't know. I don't know if I trust your judgment at all now if you can if you don't like this thing that we all seem to yes. like. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So yeah. that's actually really helpful. We're gonna point I'm gonna dig into that for a second. And then Scott, I want to hear Would you like some say. names, by the way? I actually kept a list. <laughs> no. All the people that are wrong. The people who said this. Yeah. Definitely do. <laughs> but that that the I don't know if I can trust your judgment. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. this yeah. So what we need biologically is to trust the people around us that make decisions that affect us, right? Right. Mm -hmm. And so that is starts, number one, with your care, primary caregivers. I need to trust that they'll come when I cry. Mm -hmm. And I need to trust that I'm not going to die. If they're holding me, they're not going to drop me. Like you, you begin to bond and are safe with those who can meet your needs. That's why when a young child is not getting those needs met, they will do a lot of things in order to get those needs met, which will be not be them at their actual self. Right. Maybe cry more and louder, maybe not cry at all. Like a child will start to adjust to, to get those needs met versus a child who just gets those needs met. Well, you learn, oh, I'm safe, I'm safe, I'm safe, I'm loved. And then when there's breaches in those things, like someone makes a mistake, we need to repair, you know. So you could just take it from that very early developmental biological requirement. And then we just keep living our lives. And then you find a friend who loves Star Wars with you. And it's a form of, I see you, I understand you. And w w I don't have to explain myself. I'm just getting a basic need met in terms of that um, I am safe with you. Yeah, right. right. So think about that, how deep that really is when somebody says, oh, I love anime too. And you're like, yeah. And then you can just start to talk about those things. It's a language you share. Mm -hmm. It's like meeting someone who you are related to and it's a long lost cousin or something because we speak the same language. We connect in the same way, which means from a tribal perspective, you're safe because you understand my language, mm -hmm. right? If we mm -hmm. think of why um, someone, a stranger showing up in a village back in the day who looked different, talked different, ate different, spoke a different language, and behave differently, they were a serious threat. Because mm -hmm. we don't know what any of that means. Literally, we don't know what they're saying, right? Right. So when we can connect on these very, um, I, I'm using fandom because it's uh, it, it's a great, like, lovely example. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, before I get to the actual tribalism and historical stuff. But so we have this, oh, you're automatically safe. So for whatever this these two friends have had for 40 years together, it was safety, connection, bonding, clicking on certain things. I mean, they they see each other physically a couple times a year. They're online playing together. So D&D &D sounds like a, a place where they just found their common language and connection, right? Mm -hmm. So it feels crappy to not have that, and you kind of distrust the thing, but then it feels really good to have it. So, Scott, let me go back to you. What does it feel like to you when somebody thinks something you really love is stupid or... They don't get it. Or like me not watching Fargo. How about that? How's that feel? Um, well, not quite as bad or not quite as uh, I don't have as much of a visceral reaction as if you said I hate Fargo. Like if you said that, right. I'd go, oh, my gosh, why? <laughs> when, you and I have a lot in common. I, I feel like we have similar tastes. I think you would probably enjoy it. And it would be it would be dis. Uh, what's the word? I'd be I'd be disconcerting that that you are yeah. so far off on a thing. That I would have had some presumption you, that we had a we had a common in common. Yeah, yeah you've got exactly because you feel like you've got everything else in common. Having this is like feels like wait a minute how how can we like all of these other things and you don't like this one thing that that yes. that I really like a lot. Yeah. yeah. Yes, and and that is a, another really great point, which is I don't know if I know you. So that we have a trust factor, and we have a I thought I knew you, maybe I don't know you, mm. and. That again leads back to safety. I, you know, when we think we know stuff, our brain does a lot of shortcuts just to save energy. And so, if you like this, it's like when you meet someone who's like dressed a certain way, talks a certain way, and then you find out they they don't match that. Maybe they're they look like a hippie, but they're like a mega of mega. You know, I love banks and corporate America. And you're like, what? And now welcome, Stephen, to the show. Whoa, sorry. That played randomly, and I did not tell it to. <laughs> sorry. Welcome, Stephen, to the show. He's not anyway, here. Yeah, so he's, I promise he isn't here. Go ahead. Uh, hey, Stephen. Uh, he's a hippie who loves banking. That's um, right. 
<laughs> but just that idea of like, it doesn't match all the assumptions you make and put together yeah. because our brain has short cut a, a person. This is stereotyping. This is why we mm. profile. This is why we do is our brains are like, make this quick. Mm. All right. They look that way. That's what they are. This is what they do. This is what they think. Um, and so when we have someone who breaks those molds, we either delight in that because it meets enough, pings enough of the things we like about them. Yeah. Or maybe it really bugs us. Like, why aren't you consistent? Why don't you hate the thing I hate? Because you also hate this other thing I hate or whatever, right? Right. Mm -hmm. So that, I mean, from a fundamental level, we all have our, um, who we feel safe with, what indications the person gives that they're safe. Like a, a wild animal is another good example. Like, how do you know that dog's not going to bite you? Well, there's a couple of things it does with its body mm. that show you that. Um, and so safety is kind of our brain's first job, keep us safe. So it also shorts cuts to save energy. So then what we end up having is these people that though we can have a 40 year friendship, suddenly we're like, wait a minute. Oops. I don't know. Mm. I don't know if I like that their opinion is different from mine and, you know, et cetera, et cetera. So here's the thing. Let's, let's take what, and, and of course we can't directly ask them, but you think you know someone, you yeah. even have that phrase, right? We think you know someone. Yeah. Well, nobody yeah. knows everybody. <laughs> you don't know any, <laughs> you don't know everything about or everything everyone. about everybody. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Right. And so the, the fact that there's other ways someone might be thinking or changing, and this is a big one that I, I thought of when I was reading this email of just how people change based on the influences around them. So you know, I've, I've got a bunch of good friends that I've known since we were 11, 14, and we are old now. And the way we have all changed, we like to joke, if we met today, we're not sure we'd be friends <laughs> because we're really different. Yeah. And our spouses have had big influences on the directions we lean and the things we're into. And, um, you know, it, it we change over time. So 40 years is a really long time for someone to change. And not all the change is going to be played out in a and d game, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. You get to see, like, if you, your, your coworker at work, you think you know them, but guess what? Let's, let's go over to their house at midnight. Maybe it's a different person, you know? So there's those factors all playing out here. Now we throw in this massive international event that is terrible and so divided, has been divided for so long Anyone new to this game, and, and I'm not even speaking about someone who's Jewish and someone who's Palestinian, like they are clearly have way more skin in the game than the vast majority of people who deeply care about this. Right. Um, everyone's jumping in with their opinions, with their thoughts, with the news that is being, they are partaking of and the news they are ignoring, right? Or they are assuming is conspiracy or they are assuming is false or vice versa, right? So it is almost unknowable in some ways, what is actually happening, but everyone believes they know what's happening. I think that's that's one of the trickiest things is that we're all so informed in certain ways. And then it's really hard to tell how we're not informed. And we really believe that we got it, right? And right. so I hear this and I think if we got an email from the other guy, we might be hearing the exact same thing, which is like my Jewish friend is unwilling to see what's happening, right? Yeah. Um, et cetera, et cetera. So you could just flip the, the script, flip the names. This is probably going to be true of any family where there are two people involved and there's discord or take a divorce. You, you take a relationship ending and just the, the things people say to themselves in order to manage all of that deep pain and, um, and the things they start to do and how they behave. I mean, it's, it's really tricky. And so this is a big, big, big one. And then your friendship of 40 years is now interacting with this massive thing. Now I would be really interested, like, how did they interact about this before? Right. So before October, what was their conversations about, um, Palestinian situation and Israeli politics and like, how were they, interacting about it before because that may be a clue to why this is happening or maybe it was just we never talked about it and that was our friendship is based on D D and hanging out 
on the beach once a summer or mm-hmm. something, you know? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Hard to know. It's interesting so, because the the yeah. you, you have to think that prior to this escalation in that conflict, I mean, whatever, the, the history is littered with these escalations in that conflict. So it's yes. not like this is anything new. But prior to this, it's a lot of historical data, right? Or a lot of sort of it's happening, it's tense, but we're not really thinking about it because we're busy over here playing D&D or whatever. And then suddenly there's this moment of, whoa, and you can't help but notice, right? You have to pay attention yeah. again. And then suddenly one of you is getting information maybe from very specific sources and somebody else is getting it from another source and they conflict. And now, now out, kind of out of nowhere, there's this divide that must be really hard for them, you know? Yeah. Or hard to hard for this person because... It wasn't there before, as best right. you knew. Maybe it was always there. It was all just ready to spring into action. But you know, it right. took a took a terrorist attack and a and a and a very heavy response to do it. I don't know. It's right. weird. And mm-hmm. everyone is an expert, and this is really difficult. I was getting my hair done, and my hairdresser, who I love deeply, is not uh, educated in any mm. sort of form of international diplomacy. Mm. Says to me what do you think about this? I'm like, what do you think about what? We're having, first of all, neither of us have any ideas, right? We're, you know, I have, a, I have, I lived in Israel and I lived in Jerusalem and I took Arabic and I took Hebrew and I traveled a bit and I had my own personal, I had some personal experiences with Israelis and Palestinians and have, you know, and all that taught me is I know less than I ever should to open my mouth, (laughs) right? Like, um, and she has zero. She just sees what she's being presented. And I think that's another point. Yeah, social media or whatever, yeah. Right, and that's another big point. Who knows what everyone's seeing? And um, unless someone has curated all their feeds to get both sides, to get deep dives into the experiences, and then they're following, you know, they're studying the politics of everything, and they (laughs) don't... The level you would have to be at to really have any kind of expertise here is it, it's wild, right? Mm, mm. But we all feel like we're experts because we watched a thing that moved us or yeah. that was believable because I already see, I'm already inclined to think these are the bad guys or I'm already inclined to think these guys are the victims. And so my my um, the biases will continue to just move you in the direction you're already headed usually, right? Yeah. It takes a a lot usually for someone to switch completely, but often it requires them to be emotionally moved. And this is where I think we all fail to understand the power of friendship is actually the, the, the problem that, or the solution to so many things like the stuff that does connect us and already keeps us um, interacting and communicating is bigger than this other stuff. The problem is we don't let it be bigger. What we do is we let the new information or the social media be bigger or whatever it is. And we don't do the work of communicating with our friend. So I appreciate the email because what he's saying is, I, what do I, I don't know. Right. Mm -hmm. And the answer is not send him information to change his mind. That is not the answer. I know it feels deeply like the answer. It literally won't work. It won't work. Yeah. Yeah. You can try, but it won't work. You need to put it's a sign not. in your yard and that'll change his mind. It works every single time. All yeah. are welcome here or whatever yeah. you got to do. Yes, yeah. totally. <laughs> and and like if we were all called on our stuff, like I don't know if you ever saw the onion. Uh, this is what I love about the onion. But the onion sign, it has, you know, all are welcome here sign in a neighborhood where this, the least expensive house is $5 million. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> and it's like go to yeah. the door, knock on the door, and ask is all are all actually welcome yeah. and force their hand. Like no one's gonna yeah, exactly you can't do yes. it. Yeah. <laughs> because that's not what what anyone is actually doing. They are they're 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 feeling lots of feelings. They're watching lots of stuff, sure. and they, they are want, trying bet, to do something. And yeah. I believe they want it to be true. They want sure. they want to say that that all are welcome here. But yeah, right. But it's a little harder in action. And so when you take your tribe, they are both already in their tribes. They both identify as their tribe. Mm -hmm. Um, And so we are already starting on a very, very split ground. And the cool thing is they've been friends for 40 years, right? The miracle has already happened, right? The connection is already there. That goes so much deeper. I just don't think we maybe honor that enough or keep it that safe enough. So here's what I would suggest um, is... 
and and this this is maybe and you guys can tell me if you've done something different from this but i think muting a lot of what you are taking in that makes you sort of really get frustrated with people that you love and care about so mm-hmm. you are not following them on facebook to find out all of their rants about this or that right because yeah. it's real right when when i know very normal smart intelligent <laughs> lovely kind people who are fans of some really disgusting things I really struggle to trust them and I really struggle yeah. to want to be around them. It's it not makes like I you not want to hear their non, it, like it makes you want to hear, not want to hear their non uh, controversial statements. It's like, no, I don't want to hear, I don't, I don't want to hear anything from you if this is how you feel. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Cause it'll make me and, feel like, Oh no, you like grilled cheese sandwiches. Crap. You like grilled cheese sandwiches and genocide. Now I feel like I can't like grilled cheese sandwiches. <laughs> Totally. Yeah. And you, and <laughs> now I don't want to talk about girl teaching the sandwiches because they're scary. No, but yeah, you're totally right. And how do you, how do you, because here's the thing, maybe there's a, some taking stock you got to do. Like, mm-hmm. what do you care about here? Do you care about, um, you know, salvaging a relationship that's lasted 40 years? Do you care about having moving beyond? Because right now we're in the moment of some things, Right. And they too shall pass and another horrible thing will occur and et cetera, et cetera. I mean, maybe for them, it's, it, it goes much deeper because it's their identity, but there is always going to be another thing that can come along and make everyone freak out. Like that, that's mm-hmm. just what we've learned. And mm-hmm. so stopping and taking stock, what do I really care about? And what do I want here? Because I either need to share some things with this person and is at the core of that my friendship and my care, then I'm going to communicate really differently than I need to share some things because this person is wrong. And Mm so we're all getting defensive. We're all got our hackles up. And then if we behave from that place, we're going to elicit other people's hackles up. (laughs) That's just how it works. That's why online communication can be so challenging is that people will read it from whatever place they're hearing it. You know, yeah, yeah, and yeah. so it's really diff- difficult to do that. So what's nice about this story, this is not, hey, on Thanksgiving, I got to go hang out with my family. I haven't talked to them for a year. And how am I going to do this? This is we are in regular communication. And so can you take it offline? Can you talk about, you know, you got to ask yourself what you want out of this. Do you want to convince them that they're wrong? Is that what you're trying to do? And if that's the case, then there's a consequence to trying to convince someone they're wrong. Yeah. Right. Is it that you want to stay feeling safe and connected? Then maybe you can communicate. Maybe you mute so you don't see all the stuff that they're doing and you just play D&D. Sometimes it's hard to just pretend that other stuff isn't bothering you. And so you do need to communicate with them. Do you think, um, so do you think this is I even, had, is this even like a thing with like, um, like marriages probably have some of this pop up sometimes, right? Where you're sitting around on the couch, you're so. watching your, you know, your Friday night TV and you're, and you say, ah, oh, the sun sure was nice today. And then your wife says, yeah, I'd sure like to wipe out all the Jews or something. <laughs> you know what I mean? I would hope that if you've married someone, <laughs> you've figured out at least a lot of those uh, knife edges that are sticking out of <laughs> Yeah, you'd hope so. But It'd I mean, be it, less, yeah. less obvious, but maybe a subtle thing. Of sure. Like, but don't you right. think? Right. Yeah. That but could happen, right? That idea. seems that seems really that seems really hard because then what are you gonna do? Yeah. You're gonna be like, Oh, I don't know, I thought I knew this person. Like it's almost yeah. it, this feels yeah. as close to that as you're gonna get when it's a close friend. It's it's as close as you are to my mm-hmm. dumb yeah. scenario. And mm-hmm. it seems bad. Anyway, sorry, I interrupted your Right, train. right. And so if if you take if you take it from a marriage or any close relationship, if you want that relationship to continue, you gotta figure out how we navigate that we have this this difference and can we influence each other is there somewhere in the middle is there a hey let me share how i'm feeling how are you feeling this is a safe place to do that this takes a lot of skill most of us are not good at so the thing i was thinking and would want to introduce i think i talked about this i mean probably five years ago maybe maybe way before yeah maybe 10 years ago. everyone's forgotten Um, so this is perfect nobody knows okay is the concept, uh, and it's a book called, um, uh, let's see, it's called Nonviolent Communication yeah. by Marshall Rosenberg. And it is, a, there's, you can go online, cnvc.org, I think is the website, but essentially it's um, 
all about being able to communicate and transform how we speak to ourselves and to other people. It's, it's just a helpful, universally accepted, diplomatic, lovely version of like being able to communicate better. Mm. Um, and they've tried these initiatives all over the world. Like I just looked up, you can go to China, Morocco, or Taiwan in the next, you know, the, this coming year. And there's trainings and there's certified trainings and certification. Like they've made a whole thing out of it. And it really starts from this, this core of communicating so that you are both heard and you are hearing and seeing the other person. Um, it's, it's, it's impressive. So it's the thing I found that I'm like, you know, at the most minimum, just read the book. How about mm -hmm. that? Let's just start with nonviolent communication. Marshall Rosenberg, his life's work's pretty impressive. <laughs> Let's start there because it is so tricky. And so before you, because I think most of us go in, um, into a conversation like we would any conversation, uh, that's sort of just like, Hey, I'm feeling this or that's stupid or, you know, it's, it's whatever the feeling we're having, we're coming in with that energy. And this is something we know from marriage counseling, how you start the conversation is 99% of the time, how that conversation will end. Right. So think about that for a minute. If I come in angry and defensive, it's going to end angry and defensive. It's never if going can, to, yeah, it's never going to no. like get peaceful and like, oh, yeah, no. good point. You're right. <laughs> and no one has ever run out of hope that they're magically going to get someone to agree with them. I don't know where we get our ever present, like, I'll convince them with this clip I found on YouTube. Like, it's mm -hmm. pretty wild as humans that we believe we're going to convince someone else with, because that thing moved us. That thing made sense to us. Um, and, you know, if you sent an article to someone just like, hey, we were discussing this. What do you think of this? And they're like, yeah, that source is liberal. So I'm not going to read it. And you're like, okay. And then they're like, well, here's my source. And then they sent you something super conservative. And you're like, yeah, but that's Breitbart. I'm not reading that, you know? And so where do we have the common language? We don't have a common article that then we both read and go, well, good points on both sides. Let's mm. discuss, you know? Yeah. Um, and so it's a skill and it is a different way of addressing things. And and maybe you, your family talks in these ways and you've got a lot of practice as a kid and you're good at it. Maybe you're a professional diplomat, but most of us are not. Most of us need to develop this skill. And so I look at this story and I just think, okay, 40 years of friendship is a hundred percent worth. And it feels like a, a little microcosm of like, if you guys can do it, maybe there's hope, right? <laughs> like, yeah. is that worth saving? And what is it worth um, in, in terms of reconciling? Maybe I don't understand my, my friend in a hundred percent of ways. And also we can have that feeling like I'm losing them, right? I'm losing them. They're going more extreme or they're thinking these different things. And when that happens, if you could come with care and like, are you okay? Yeah. And I'm worried that you're drowning in, I mean, I, you can feel this way about someone who's just in, into TikTok recipes. Like, are you okay? Do I need to rescue you? Mm. Because they're so involved and, and like losing you're losing connection to them. You can check on your friend. Yeah. Like if your um, sister's so never, so if your sister's never seen one of the greatest movies or series ever made, for example, mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, she does love the Coen brothers. And so yeah. she can't appreciate that. It she would does. She yeah. just doesn't have time. It doesn't make sense. Asked honestly, a few questions, yeah. Yeah. you know, I just yeah. don't have time. <laughs> <laughs> All Listen, right. I get it. There we we get attached to our shows so much and that we want to see everyone to see them. It kind of turns into this kind of parasitic relationship that we have with the things that we like that we want other people to see that mm -hmm. they don't get around to finally seeing. So, I totally get it, mm -hmm. uh, Wendy. Yeah, yeah. Well, Brian understands more than anybody. There's almost uh the like you said parasitic is a great way of describing it, Brian. It's like almost <laughs> like a it's almost like a parasite inside of you. Yeah. That... Oh, let's let's literally hammer home the joke. Yeah. Mm -hmm. let's... Yeah. Let's take it out there. <laughs> Uh, well, anyway, okay. I have seen and can't get out of my head. Mm. So I would wish I hadn't seen it. You wish you hadn't <laughs> seen Parasite? It took Parasite? me forever yes. to see yes. it. You probably don't know about the long running joke here on the show, but it took me no, years to see it. And I finally saw yeah. it and I liked it. Took it took me since, since I saw it the first time in the theaters to, and, and finally try, uh, you know, trying to get Scott to see it. And then somebody else recommends it to him and he sees it based on oh, <laughs> their recommendation. 
Yeah. That would be yeah. Adam's whole life story right there, uh, Brian, <laughs> is that he'll tell me to do something and I won't do it till someone else tells me to. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> So maybe, maybe yeah. I'll say, Hey, I'm going to watch Fargo. And he'll be like, oh, I've been telling you, we should watch Fargo. There you go. Like, yeah. See if he's been, Sorry. see if he's been telling you that for a while. <laughs> yes. Okay. Well, it's just final th thoughts for the, the emailer of just like, I, I would really want to encourage them to consider the, the, the cost benefit of what's going on and to recognize like, your own internal stuff. And that's, that's what nonviolent communication really is yeah. often about is figuring out your own, your own stuff here. And so recognizing your own stuff, looking in the mirror first can be hard. And, you know, cause of course we want what we want and we're sometimes being reactive for various reasons. Um, and there is very good reason as a Jewish person to be nervous a hundred percent. And so recognizing some of that fear or recognizing your own um, stuff and then really being clear about what you, that you care about this person and what you want to do here and thinking this through, because we are tempted. All of us are tempted to be right. Yeah. Especially if you grew up in homes where being right was the way to protect you or, or your safest route. Like mm -hmm. who did this? Mm -hmm. And you're like, well, I don't know who did that. And I mean, that happens in families. That happens growing up. That happens with teachers or whatever, right? So maybe checking in with like, I, why do I need to be right? And or is there is there something else going on? And sometimes it might just feel like a friend moving away and distance between you. And can you talk about that? Um, maybe it's just showing up in these other ways. And so there could be so many variations on this. So I just really want to encourage them to to, to, to look inward, figure out what's maybe going on for them and to acknowledge with some compassion that this is hard mm -hmm. and it's hard for both of you. It's hard for everyone involved. Even my dang hairdresser doesn't know what to do. You know, like it it's, and, and we're the world's so small because of the internet and yet it's just so complex. So like, you also have no, like the other thing I was, this always sing, uh, rings true to me is that you have, you may have this common thing that you're both feel like is is making the world smaller and it's all you know everyone has a voice about it and whatever but you just realize you have very little control over it you you never really do and so right. understanding that but is what you really have tons of control over is your friendship that's it like you yeah have that's it 50 percent control over that thing and that is that is a that's the gift right and so focusing on that and then and then all of us need more skills we really do like if i said to everyone listening uh, write on a piece of paper, on a real piece of paper, the last thing you posted on the internet that you probably shouldn't have. <laughs> Let's see. That you, that, that you had no business or <laughs> right to have an opinion about. Most people are like, oh, I have a right to my opinion about everything. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Right. Um, but like truly, like that you maybe just wrote too fast or you regret i mean that's the kind of point you regret writing it mm -hmm. and then ask yourself like well what why do i regret it and uh, if if yeah. we just follow through what i mean do you guys have something you could share what you don't have to share the thing but what do you regret august, about doing this august 8th 2014 i said you know i think we we're all a little too hard on hudson hawk <laughs> <laughs> wow you know that must haunt you every day. That hasn't, that hasn't aged well. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, I don't. Okay. I can't no, think. I do, I do tend to avoid. I. I. I don't know. I tend to avoid putting stuff like that out there because I feel like there's always going to be somebody who knows a lot more about it than I do, and. Right. Um. And and, it's kind of like the, uh, uh, better to keep your mouth shut and and not prove you're an idiot than to open your mouth and not leave any doubt or something like that, whatever the <laughs> phrase is. I know I've, I know I've got yeah. the, uh, I've got the, 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 I'm really messing up the uh, phrase, but whatever that is. Yeah. 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 I can't think well, of Brian, you're so mature. Maybe you're not a good example, but often I'm a bad writing, example because I'm so mature. Yes. Totally. Yeah. We're writing on someone's <laughs> Facebook wall, it get engaging in an argument that is not ours to be had, or, you know, some version of just, I am riled up. And I'm so mad that this thing is happening. 99% of the time you're mad because A, it's contradicting a thing you already believe and mm -hmm. or it's someone being stupid and you think you can tell them and or it threatens some sense of 
sanity or security. So I've, I've been having this discussion with some friends about how are you managing news as the election is coming? And mm -hmm. it's fascinating the, diff the varying responses. Um, and some are just like, I, my head's totally in the sand. I, I am yeah. only watching DIY tutorials on fixing <laughs> my bathroom floor. House and then strippers. others, yeah, right. yeah, exactly. others yeah. are really digging in and every last thing they're, you know, absorbing. And, but I think most people are pretty burned out on yeah. the doom scrolling behaviors. And so, and then feeling guilty that they're not paying attention or, you know, is the whole world going to fall apart because I'm not doing my job. And I mean, everyone's struggling. Let's just say that. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it's tricky. I've had to so stop watching uh, Real Housewives of Mar-a-Lago just for that reason. It's it's uh, horrendous. <laughs> I can't can't watch it anymore. Yeah. Oh my gosh, no. Anyway, so yeah, like what, so I would suggest to anyone, it's just, I don't know, take a minute, figure out, like ask yourself, what am I doing this for? And like really mm -hmm. listen, what are you doing this for? And yeah. nine times out of 10, some of our behaviors that are, we're, we're picking fights with strangers or we're engaging in things that are not serving us is it's, we're getting adrenaline, we're getting dopamine, we're, we're feeling valuable, we're, we're getting something out of it, but we're also really depleting maybe some stuff in our real life we need to be doing or the friendships at the, the, the core that matter or relationships. It's just it's a challenge and that's why most of us are more lonely than we've ever been. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, I'm jumping to a whole another ship on that one, but uh, anyway, so read non-violent communication. Just that's my advice. It's only 10 go. bucks on uh, Amazon. You can get See, it. Nice. It's like old. Yeah. It's good. Yeah. It's good. I think there's a new copy, like a third edition or something. Yeah. I think this one is the third. <laughs> Updated for the social media era. Yeah. <laughs> Probably. Yeah. It's a mess. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It looks really well. I mean, this is like, is the most unanimous ratings I've ever seen in my life. So, uh, yeah. Maybe this is one to grab, but there's only one one star review. And they and probably what did it say it was like, I wanted more violent communication. Yeah, I want to talk more violently. In fact, I'll do it right now. And this guy's mm -hmm. name is <laughs> Rosenberg. Violent communication. Yes. Uh, well, anyway, Wendy, uh, this has been uh, enlightening, as always it is. Yeah. And uh, we look forward to doing this uh, again next time. Uh, anything else going on that you want to talk about yet? Still some, some stuff brewing over there, I know. Just cool. brewing, and that's all I will say. Brewing, Good. brewing. Just let it brew. Let watch. It brew this is why I don't have time to watch Fargo. That's, that's right. Just say that. That's right. <laughs> let it brew. Let it cook. When it's done, you'll know. Uh, Start with the movie. There's so Fargo. much more. There's so much more than the wood chipper, and 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 don't feel like it's got to be all consumed at once. They're all different stories, so you can. I know it's such it. a cool idea. I I did know that. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah, it's all very uh very cool that way, and I think Brian's right. Start with the movie. Let that settle. Move on to the next thing. Life will be better, I promise. Uh, all right. Have a good <laughs> one. We'll see you next time. Bye. <laughs> uh, all right. We did it. We pulled it off once again with Wendy. And that means it's time to pull this off. That is to tell you find folks all the different programming options you have throughout the rest of this weekend. For example, today at noon, Coverville at twitch.tv slash Coverville. Check it out. Uh, tonight, Core at 5 p.m. I uh, think John's internet's worked out, but for sure, Bo and I will oh, be there. Uh, okay. he, uh, John's still sort of recovering from a move and it's, it's, you yeah. know how that is big old pain in the ass. Uh, but we think we'll all be there. We're not sure. But anyway, be there core 5 PM tonight. Uh, lots of stuff to talk about with GDC week going on and all that stuff. Also guess the connection at 9 AM tomorrow. I assume I put right. this in here, yep. assuming it, uh, 9 AM got some more new prizes to give away. I think, um, people did figure out, uh, last week's connection. So there will be, uh, new prizes, a prize package going out and new prizes going, uh, going up for the uh for the next for the next week nice trying to find i've got my idea for the next six songs i'm really i'm trying to find songs to fill it because i've got two or three that are like oh these are perfect it's tough finding the other three so i gotta gotta do some gotta do some searching around for do a little bit of dig and never hurt nobody right yep never hurt nobody uh we're also going to do couch party tomorrow we're watching something called grabbers Grabbers, yes, in honor of St. Patrick's Day. Uh, That's right. A little Irish film. So uh, that we've that that feels like it's too silly for film sack. I think is the way we <laughs> the way we heard about it. So mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, that'll be uh, that'll be tomorrow. Ninety minutes long. Uh, come watch it live with us if you are a patron of the show, and also we will post both video and audio after if you can't be yes. there live. Uh, anyway, that's the thing that we're doing. And also at 1.30, System Shock coverage for Play Retro with me and Brian Dunaway. Do check that out. And, of course, cool. Film Sack this weekend is happening with Cowboys and Aliens. Woo! Woo! Fun stuff. Woo! 
and uh, uh, let's see, a Millennium Falcon build at some point this afternoon, uh, live on YouTube, youtube.com slash Coverville. Subscribe and get notified. Click the little bell to get notified when I go live. Yeah. Smash that subscribe like Harry button. Carey. <laughs> <laughs> Listen. Arr, I'm going to be throwing Millennium Falcon pieces like a can of cream corn. <laughs> My favorite thing he ever did on SNL. <laughs> for sure. Uh, that's it for the show. We're done. If you want to find any links to everything else, we're over there at uh, frogpants.com slash TMS. We'll now leave you with a song. Brian, take it away. Sweet. Yes, I've got a song going out to John. Uh, hi, all. This is John from Oregon. TMS Coverville and core patron. Third time texter. First time requester. I'm turning 55 on March 12th. Yep, that's I'm still catching up nine days ago. And would like to request a song. I'd love to hear a cover of The Replacements, unless that cover is metal, skiffle, or God forbid, postmodern jukebox. Ooh. I'm just, I'm going to pretend, uh, well, let me get my book out. Nonviolent, nonviolent communication. Okay. All right. Okay. <laughs> I'm past it. Thank you, Wendy. Good okay. timing for that yeah. segment. Uh, I'd also like to know where Love the Show, though, came from. I've been listening since around 2015 and, like, seriously, wanted to know. <laughs> <laughs> Did another nice meme. Job there. Yeah. Uh, it uh, is a, it's an old email, uh, right? It was an ancient email that we got? No, no. It was, oh, right. Love the Show, though, was an email. Yeah. That's right. I can see why you like it came from the uh, one of our video challenges. Yeah, but, yeah. Yeah, somebody sent an email and they closed it with Love the Show, though. Which is like the most backhanded compliment because <laughs> there was nothing before that that implied they didn't love the show. Mm -mm. But just the fact that they signed off with that was enough for us to go, oh, well, why wouldn't they love the show? <laughs> yeah. And it really, really stuck. So it was hard to get rid of. And now we just accept it as the most common meme we have around here. So that's right. Yeah. Exactly. It's good stuff. It's good stuff. Uh, let's get to your request, John, uh, from Oregon. This is Katie Goodman and Greta Morgan from an album called Take It. It's yours. Love it. This is a cover of the song by the replacements, Bastards of Young. And guess what? It's not metal. It's not skiffle. And it's not postmodern jukebox. Whoa. Enjoy it. Bastards of Young. All right. That'll do it for us. We'll see you guys on Monday. Bye. Get more at frogpants.com. Oh, I don't have a thing queued up. Uh, um, uh, how about... Uh, Honk. Ah! Oh, that's a good one. Let's do that. Ah! There we go. Why not? You know? Uh -huh. Why not indeed? Perfect. Why not? Why not? Uh...